Now let's evaluate some limits at infinity. Consider the limit as x approaches infinity of the rational function 3x squared minus x minus 2 all over 5x squared plus 4x plus 1. So to evaluate the limit at infinity of any rational function, we first divide both the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x that occurs in the denominator. So note that dividing by x will never give us division by 0 because we're only considering values of x that are very, very large. So in this example, the highest power of x in the denominator is x squared. So I'm going to divide both the numerator and denominator by x squared. Then I can simplify the fraction in the numerator and the fraction in the denominator by dividing each term by x squared and simplifying. In the numerator, I'll get 3x squared divided by x squared, which is 3, minus x over x squared, which reduces to minus 1 over x, and negative 2 over x squared. So minus 2 over x squared. Similarly, in the denominator, 5x squared divided by x squared is 5. 4x divided by x squared is positive 4 over x when I cancel a common factor of x. And then I get a plus 1 over x squared. So limits as x approaches infinity still follow all the same limit laws. So now I can take the limit of the numerator divided by the limit of the denominator. Then I can use the sum rules, difference rules, and constant multiple rules of the, the limit laws to rewrite this expression in the following way. And then I can evaluate each of the individual little limits. Recall that the limit of 1 over a power of x will always limit to 0. So the numerator simplifies to 3 minus 0 minus 0. The denominator simplifies to 5 plus 0 plus 0. So the final limit is 3 over 5. So in this example, I showed every single possible detail using all of the limit laws. But in general, once you have divided each term of the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x in the denominator, you can often you can just take the limit of each piece without having to write the limits all out like in this step right here. So we see that the limit as x approaches infinity of this function equals 3 fifths. So if you looked at the graph of this function, we'd see that as x gets very, very large to the right, the function would be approaching height 3 over 5. So we say that the line y equals 3 fifths is a horizontal asymptote of uh, the graph of this function. Notice that if I replace infinity by negative infinity, the limit would still equal 3 fifths because the limit of 1 over a power of x, 1 over x, 1 over x squared, these would, limits would also equal 0 if x is approaching negative infinity. So therefore, to the left, the function would also be, the graph of the function would also be approaching height 3 fifths. Let's look at another example. Let's find the horizontal asymptotes of the graph of the function f of x, which equals the square root of 2x squared plus 1, all divided by 3x minus 5. So in order to find the horizontal asymptotes, we need to find the limits of this function as x approaches infinity and as x approaches negative infinity. First, let's look at the limit as x approaches positive infinity. So in order to find this limit, we're going to divide both the numerator and denominator by x, which is the highest power of x in the denominator. And then we're going to use properties of limits to evaluate this limit. 
So the denominator simplifies. If I divide both terms by x, I get 3 minus 5 over x. But in the numerator, to divide by x, I need to get the x underneath the square root symbol. So I'm going to rewrite x as the square root of x squared. So then I can simplify the fraction underneath the radical. So the numerator simplifies as the square root of 2 plus 1 over x squared. By the properties of limits, I can take the limit of the numerator divided by the limit of the denominator. And since I have the limit of a square root, I can actually pull the limit inside the square root to get the following expression. Now let's evaluate these limits. So as x goes to infinity underneath the square root symbol, the, the f expression 1 over x squared will approach 0. So to denote this, I'm going to put a line and a point to 0. This little fraction will go to 0. And in the denominator, as x approaches 0, the negative of 5 over x will also approach 0. And the constants will stay the same as x approaches infinity. So the, f the final limit will equal the square root of 2 divided by 3. So we see that the line y equals square root of 2 over 3 is a horizontal asymptote of the graph of f of x. Now let's consider the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x. Well, in computing the limit as x approaches negative infinity, we have to remember that x is negative. And so the square root of x squared that we use in the numerator will actually equal the negative of x. Okay? We use the fact earlier that the square root of x squared when x was approaching infinity actually was equivalent to x. But technically the definition of the square root of x squared is absolute value of x. And so that's why when x was positive this just equals x. But when x is negative the square root of x squared, which is defined as the absolute value of x, technically will equal negative x. Again, this is when x is negative. So when x is negative, the negative of x will actually be a positive number. So we'll need to use this fact when we evaluate the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So let's go back and change this limit to the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, we again want to divide the numerator and denominator by x. So x is approaching negative infinity. But in order to get this x underneath the radical, I need to realize that the negative of x will equal the square root of x squared. So in the next step, when I put the x squared underneath the radical, I need to introduce a negative sign because x, again, is approaching negative infinity. So this is the big difference as the, we look at the limit as x approaches infinity and negative infinity. And this, this negative sign will carry out through the rest of the problem. So I'll have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the negative of square root of 2 plus 1 over x squared divided by 3 minus 5 over x. Again, we're looking at the limit as x approaches negative infinity. And then we can still take the limit of the numerator divided by the limit of the denominator. And we can take the limit inside the square root symbol 
So I have the negative of the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2 plus 1 over x squared. Again, the 1 over x squared will go to 0. And in the denominator, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 3 minus 5 over x. The 5 over x will still approach 0. So we get negative square root of 2 over 3. So the line y equals negative square root of 2 over 3 is also a horizontal asymptote of the graph of f of x. So we see that to the right, the limit as x approaches infinity is square root of 2 over 3, and as x approaches negative infinity, the limit is negative square root of 2 over 3. Now let's consider the limit as x approaches infinity of sine of 1 over x. Recall that the sine function is a continuous function, and so we had a theorem about limits that I can take the limit inside the continuous function. So this will equal the sine of the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. And we saw that as x goes to infinity, the limit of 1 over x will equal 0. So this just equals the sine of 0, which equals 0. Let's consider another important function. Consider the limit of the function e to the x as x approaches negative infinity. Here is a quick sketch of the graph of the function y equals e to the x. From the graph, we see that the function is getting closer and closer to the x-axis, or in other words, to height 0, as x gets very, very large to the left. So we see that the limit of e to the x as x approaches negative infinity equals 0. Let's look at a limit that's related to the previous limit. Consider the function e to the power 1 over x. Well, we're going to make a change of variables here. Let's consider what happens to 1 over x as x gets approach, approaches 0 from the left. So as x approaches 0, the function 1 over x will get very large. It's either going to get very large positive or large negative. Since we're considering only values of x that are slightly less than 0, x is negative, and therefore 1 over x is getting closer and closer to negative infinity. It's getting very, very large negative. So for this example, I'm going to let t stand for 1 over x. So I'm going to make a substitution here and rewrite this limit. So I'm going to let t equal 1 over x. Now I'm going to rewrite this limit in terms of t. We see that as x approaches 0 from the left, one over x is going to get closer and closer to infinity. So t is going to be approaching negative infinity. So when I rewrite this limit in terms of t, this limit will equal the limit as t approaches negative infinity of e to the t. So the original limit and this limit must have the same value. We just evaluated this limit. We saw that e raised to a very large negative exponent will get closer and closer to 0. Now let's consider the following limit as x approaches infinity. This expression is the square root of x squared plus 1 minus x. So as x gets very, very large, the first term is getting very, very large as well. As x goes to infinity, square root of x squared will grow without bound as well and go get close and closer to infinity. But as x goes to infinity, I'm subtracting x. So the second term is getting closer and closer to negative infinity. 
So it seems to be that there's an infinity minus infinity type war going on between these two terms. Let's see if there's a way to solve this using some algebra. We saw a trick earlier for evaluating these types of limits with a radical and we're going to use the same trick. We're going to actually multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate radical. So this expression I'm going to rewrite by multiplying by the fraction square root of x squared plus 1 plus x divided by itself. So I'm really multiplying this limit by an equivalent, an expression equivalent to just 1 so I'm not changing the values of this expression. But now let's multiply out the numerators of this expression. So the denominator remains the same, x squared, square root of x squared plus 1 plus x. But in the numerator, I'm going to use the FOIL method to multiply this all together. So I get square root of x squared plus 1 times square root of x squared plus 1. This will simplify to just x squared plus 1. When I multiply the first and last term together and the two inner terms together, these terms will cancel out. I'll get x times square root of x squared plus 1, and then I'll get a minus x times square root of x plus 1. So those terms cancel out, and what remains is I need to multiply negative x times x, which will give me a negative x squared. So now this expression, the x squareds will cancel, in the numerator, and I'll just get the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over square root of x squared plus 1 plus x. Now consider this expression. We're looking at the limit of 1 over a bunch of positive terms involving x as x approaches infinity. Well, just like the, using, this is very similar to 1 over x because square root of x squared is essentially equal to x. So both terms are approximately the size of x. Well, as x goes to infinity, 1 over any power of x will, any positive power of x will grow without bound, will, will actually go to 0. So in this expression, this is just like 1 over x. As x goes to infinity, the expression, the limit will equal 0.